Holding my granddaughter, like the first granddaughter, it just felt like I was blessed. I don't ever remember my grandma saying she didn't have time for us. You just want to shower them with what it is that you know and how to protect them and just love them. And you know, our children need that. The grandchildren need that experience. They need to know that they have parents and grandparents. It's a special feeling as a grandparent to know that the wisdom that I have, that they will carry that on. That's the role of the grandparent. Put their arms around that child and let that child know they're loved and that they have the time for them. As indigenous grandparents, we are guided by a kinship system that is thousands of years old. It has kept our family strong and capable of surviving adversity. The role of the grandparent is crucial to the family unit. When I was a child, it was a slow, quiet life that was lots of labor-intensive tasks just to get through the day, but that was all relationship building because you had to work cooperatively in the family just to survive. That came to be very clear and grounded about what's the roles and responsibilities in the family. I think traditionally Grandparents played a vital role in parenting. They had the time and they had the wisdom to be able to transfer the basic values of unconditional love, respecting a child, having compassion just for their humanness, and that connection between the grandparent and the grandchild is so special in terms of nurturance and just personal growth and just love and laughter. I had a really close relationship with my grandmothers and when I go through a rough time, I think about that time and I know that somebody loved me. Somebody took the time and spend that time with me. And I, that brings me security. And, and uh, I was very close to both grandparents. We have a lot to give our families. But what if our grandchildren are taken into government care? How will they learn their culture? And who will nurture them? How do you nurture? In our indigenous world, nurturing is the universe. It's a kinship system. The whole universe is a kinship system. So a child learns that they are connected. The indigenous kinship system has many layers of relationships. At its core is the child, then the parents, the grandparents, the extended family, community, nation, and so on. Traditionally, when one of these relationships is unable to fulfill its role, then other relationships would work together to fill in the gaps. For our people, we've always had this understanding of relationship as a part of being of something greater, a world where we fit in and it's not separate from us. People were so close, and that's what's missing today. 
you know, it's our relationship. We were a collective people. We lived here in harmony for a long time, and we existed in that way. When contact came, that's when our way was not respected and it was broken down. The Canadian government passed the Indian Act in 1876, which forced the removal of Indian children into residential schools. The schools were put in place to assimilate the children into a Eurocentric worldview, a worldview that was very different from what they had known through their family teachings. When they separated all the family members, mom and dad stayed home under a patriarchal system and then they were further separated from their siblings in male and female so what roles and what responsibilities were learned and this is generationally it didn't just happen one generation it happened in my family for three generations They were taught a system, you know, and a way of life that they could not understand. And then they came back home after they were 15, 16 years old, back to the reservations or back to the community. And the people were suffering, the people were hurting, there was dysfunction, the community was going through all these hardships. In 1951, an amendment to the Indian Act gave the provinces the right to remove indigenous children from their homes. Social workers with no understanding of the issues in Aboriginal communities apprehended almost 20,000 children from 1960 to 1980. This era is commonly referred to as the 60s scoop. Because of residential schools and all this, uh, the 60s scoop and other events that happened in our history. As they emerged and as our people went through that time, we disconnected somehow. We lost that opportunity to, to be learning how to be parents and then how to be grandparents. And so everything we're doing, we are doing today, we are learning as we go along. The disconnect continues to widen. Today, there are over 27,000 Aboriginal children in care across the country. And there is a deep-rooted distrust of government services. The more children are taken out of the community, out of the family, all we are doing is perpetuating the issue. At this point, there's more children in child welfare than there were children in residential school. One out of every 10 Aboriginal child is out of parental home. So we're really creating a nation of Aboriginal people that are totally disconnected from their traditional values, from their communities. So it used to be that if a child was considered to be not safe. Then the child was apprehended. And then that child was placed in a foster home. Typically that was strangers. Typically once they went there, didn't have contact with their family, community, whatever, big rift. And this used to be the acceptable practice. Since the 1970s, Aboriginal people have been challenging the system to change. The changes have been slow, but we are starting to see a shift in Alberta's legislation. In the Child, Youth and Family Enhancement Act, Section 2.1 considers the benefits of a placement within the child's extended family, the benefits of a placement within or as close as possible to the child's home community, and the benefits of a placement that respects the child's familial, 
cultural, social, and religious heritage. I think everybody in general wants the well-being of the child. The welfare of the child is at most important. But when you take that responsibility away from the parents and grandparents, I think there's a big question mark there for me. I find that there's a great deal of work to be done in that area in child intervention in all jurisdictions uh, in North America and globally. So that has been a really crucial piece. And uh, because I think children grow better when they're in families, I think there's a lot of work to be done to ensure that we ensure that children are connected. Our grandchildren and families need us. And government services also need us to step forward if we have the desire and ability to do so. We can help our grandchildren by being part of the decision making. How do we ensure that there's connection for those kids? How do we ensure that we're keeping children out of the care system? That's permanency, right? It's about connection to people, legal, physical, relational. So it's as much about keeping children in their families, whether that's with their mom and dad or, or uh, with whatever their family of origin looks like, or whether it's with the broader extended family and in their communities. That's essential for children. Knowing who they are would be beneficial for them. Their identity, their, knowing their culture, because a lot of times if a person is lost in the system, they're going to forever be looking you know, for what they missed. Our role as grandparents is a valuable one. We can help stabilize our families. But once a child is taken into care, planning happens quickly. Let your grandchild's caseworker know you would like to be part of a family group conference. We would contact all family members who have an interest in the child's safety and sit down as a group in a family group conference and be able to look at the child's interests and what the best plan for the safety of that child is. Family group conference is to empower the family to make those decisions. Family group conferences help the family sort out everyone's responsibility when a child cannot live with the parent. Talking together can bring up issues in the family. A biological family, everybody loves each other. There's disagreements within, you know, within the family. There always is, and there always will be. But when you get right down to it, and you give them the focus that we're here for the children, they get on board. Reconnecting the family to plan together is important to understand our roles and responsibilities. If your grandchild is in government care, you may want to help by becoming their legal guardian. This is called private guardianship. You will have to inform the child's caseworker. Even if they do not agree that you should be a guardian, you can still apply and a judge will make the decision. Grandparents have family traditions, they have cultural traditions and connection to that child and we want to reinforce those connections. If you know you can only provide temporary care for your grandchild, then an option to consider is kinship care. Kinship care makes you a temporary guardian. You will receive a base income to assist you with the costs of raising a child. Inform the caseworker of your interest. You will have to discuss personal information with the caseworker. This is to ensure safety for your grandchild. The caseworker would give them the application and we also have a kinship support worker that can help guide them through the process where they would have to get an intervention record check, a criminal record check, they have to get a medical reference, and then they have to have a home study. It's a lengthy process, it's intrusive, but I think because we want to ensure the safety of the child that it's necessary. Figuring out a plan for your grandchild's safety is not always easy. We have to try to maintain positive relationships 
for the best possible outcome. Get to know all these people in that grandchild's life and develop a good relationship with them and make an effort to uh, create that relationship. When you seek information, you will find that some people are eager and committed to helping you. And you might find others who aren't, but you have to believe in what you're trying to do. Systems can be scary and they can feel like they're offensive and that they're set up to not let you in. To just keep pushing so that your, your grandchildren know that you're there and that you try to be part of their lives. And to realize how critical you are for them. At times, our grandchildren will not be able to live with anyone in the family. You can still be a part of their lives through visitation. Ask the caseworker about planned visits and a cultural connection plan. You have a lot to share with your grandchild. Cultural connections are critical for children. They're critical not only for identity formation, but for that sense of stability and security in who you are and how you belong in your broader family. A lot of times it's the grandparents that are setting up the visits on a, a weekly or a monthly uh, visit depending on how far the grandchildren are from them. But it's them that are continuing to make contact and not losing uh, the child to that system you have a good understanding what needs to happen. We need to revisit Indigenous families. We need to revisit how do we uh, build the capacity in families, put resources into building families, strengthening families. Today, I'm present in that decision-making role when it comes to my grandchildren because that is my right that is my responsibility and I derive that authority from the fact that that is my daughter's child or my son's child I am the grandmother that's the natural order of things that's the natural law Your children are gifts from the Creator, and um, it's how you enjoy your gift, you know, enjoying your children. And having grandkids is uh, a lot more special, where you see yourself through your, your grandkids, and you see your children in your grandkids. So when I'm with my grandchildren, I give them love. That's something I didn't have. I understand what love is now. It took me a long time. And I try to give that to my grandchildren. And I try to focus on their strengths. And I try to focus on having the patience and say the good things. Make them feel good about themselves. To me, that grandchild needs a grandparent for them to be healthy and to be balanced and to have good energy and to be able to have a meaningful life. I think when we get to be grandparents, I think uh, we have a special place in holding the family together, shaping responsibilities and this is what I try to do with my grandchildren is really try to get them to experience our way of life because it's one thing to talk about it but the power in it is the experience so I think grandparents have that uh, special responsibility in terms of humanity my grandmother she taught us a lot and I think that's what I miss. Somebody that was so grounded in who they are 
and just so full of love to give. Yeah, I love my grandmother. For more information, call Native Counseling Services of Alberta at 1-780-451-4002. To speak with a court worker in your area.